Director of High Effect Images to Early Education, and I'm going to be your MC for this evening. Type is an early education collaborative in the School Readiness Council here in Enfield. Um, that allows us to partner with the amazing staff and administration of Enfield Public Schools to ensure a smooth transition for your kiddo to kindergarten. You're going to hear from several of these fabulous, fabulous people tonight. And then there will be time at the end for a general question and answer session. And then at the very end, each of our primary schools will have a different breakout area in the auditorium. So if you have school specific questions, if you want to meet them and introduce yourself, we'll have time for that at the end as well. In the unlikely event of an emergency, we have exit doors here and here and out. So first up, I'm going to call Enfield Public Schools Director of Health Services, Jess Farrell, who's going to go over important medical documents and information.
there's going to be over the next few months lots of opportunities um, for you guys to get more information. Um, tonight's kind of a global view of, of what we're going to see and what we're going to need for registration. Um, if you haven't registered yet, um, you can find the registration link um, on each of the schools. So go on there, take a look. Most of the process can be done very simply um, online. If you are already enrolled at your public schools through uh, one of these programs at Stowe, all you need to do is sit back, relax, and maybe get that um, some of those health updated health documents because your registration is not going away. So that that's one of the benefits. If you're registering for uh, an outside program or your child has been home and you have questions when you pull out those documents, don't worry, just call me and I'll talk to you through it on the phone or we can set up an appointment and have you come in and do it in person, um, which is, you know, we will make time to do that. Um, speaking of orientation, uh, it's usually held for the last week of the summer. Uh, date to be determined this year, we had a date picked out that wasn't going to um, so, the second week of August, we send out letters. Each of the letters will have your teacher assignment, um, and it will also have the invitation to the orientation. At the orientation, you will get a chance to tour the building, meet some of the staff, meet our nurses, meet the office staff, and meet your teacher, see the classroom, um, and learn some school specific procedural things like drop off, pick up. Uh, each building is set up differently, um, just because it's been built over a number of years. Um, none of our buildings are similar at all, um, or our current situation, so um, that's information you'll get in orientation. Uh, let's see, bus schedules. Um, if you are a family who is going to take the bus, um, the scheduler will go online um, sometime this summer. Um, it won't give you an exact um, pick up at your house. You'll just look for the closest intersection to your house for the bus stop. Um, and, and again, if you have any questions, you can go with that in orientation. The person who will be there, the office staff will be there um, to answer any questions that you have and we'll walk you through any, any last minute um, documents um, that, that may need to be turned in. But I think the last piece here is uh, this here. So if you didn't get a chance on the way in to stop and speak to the people the tables out there, um, we have PTO representing all three of our schools. Um, PTO, uh, I know, you know everything's so PTO. Uh, they do an amazing job for our kids in the fundraising um, that goes directly to, um, to the kids and enriches, um, enrichment programs, uh, field trips, all kinds of that stuff. Um, it's a great group of people. It's a great way to network to meet other families in your, your home building. Um, some of the PTOs are setting up um, sister school PTOs, so Henry Barner, our sister school, is uh, Prudence Crandall, and, uh, and we share a PTO, which is really nice because there's some continuity as we can move on. Uh, but we have a PTO out there, I would encourage you to stop and get information, uh, meet, with, meet our um, members, and then of course the DRS. They're our um, partner that provides before and after care in each of our programs. So, if you think you may need before or after care or both, um, stop in. Um, they'll have uh, some pamphlets for you that can answer your questions. So, with that. Each school has an assistant principal as well, so I'm going to call all three of them up now. They're going to go through just a brief PowerPoint in what a typical day in K looks like as we kind of find a five o'clock call it. So, I'll have exactly the bottle and then we'll just we'll start. All right, so as um, Brianna just said, we're going to share a very brief PowerPoint with you of what kindergarten is going to be like. Um, please don't get nervous about this. Your kids may know some of the skills that we're going to talk about, and they may not when they enter kindergarten. That's okay, because this is what they're going to learn while they're in kindergarten for the entire year. So again, this is just a brief introduction to kindergarten in the summer before school starts at the orientation at each of our buildings, we will go into further details, okay? So go ahead and turn, before, hold on the back, sorry. <laughs> before um, I go on, I'm gonna introduce 
This is Jen Hayford. She is the assistant principal at Henry Barnard. And then we have Kim Tate. She's the assistant principal at Matthew Griffin Warren. All right, so on the screen in front of you, this is a daily schedule of what a kindergarten day may look like. Um, it might be set up a little bit differently at each of the schools or within the classrooms, but there's an arrival time when your kids have breakfast. There's usually a morning meeting. They have writing. They have snack time. They're going to have a literacy block in which they go learn phonetic awareness, phonics, read aloud, all kinds of things. They also have math. There's lunch. They'll attend a special each day. They'll have recess. There's science and social studies that will take place. They have play centers and there's dismissal. This is a lot. The kids will get used to it. The teachers do provide multiple movement breaks, mindfulness moments, things like that. Your kids will get used to the structure of their day. So please don't worry about this. If this seems like a lot, it is, but they will get used to it. All right, as far as literacy goes, so the following foundational skills um, are explicitly taught and repeatedly practiced so that they become automatic for your child. So they're going to learn about their letters, sounds, phonemic awareness in which they identify and manipulate the sounds, um, phonics, where they're able to segment and blend to decode words, high frequency words, and concepts of print. In writing, Writing is also explicitly taught just like literacy, and it increases the game complexity over time throughout the course of the year. So for writing, it's going to practice their letter formation, they'll practice drawing illustrations, they'll practice labeling of pictures, writing simple sentences to match the pictures, they'll learn about the language conventions of being able to write capital letters and punctuation, and then they're going to learn to write narrative stories, informational stories, and opinion pieces. So for math, they're going to be explicitly taught math um, strategies and numbers. But these are the things that they're going to go over throughout the year. They're going to learn to identify and count and write numbers up to 20. They're going to count by ones, fives, and tens to 100. They're going to add and subtract to five. They're going to identify 2D and 3D shapes. They're going to work on measurement and problem solving using numbers up to 10. Special. So every class is a special <coughs> one per day. They get gym twice a week, which is awesome if you love it. Um, there's art, music, computers, library, and STEAM. STEAM happens every other week. Um, we have teachers who are close to the school, who come to the school every other week. They're going to work on executive function skills. Um, these are skills that you need to be successful. Um, <coughs> um, stuff like time management, task initiation, self control, flexible thinking, peer relations, sharing, taking turns, planning, independence, and Play center is probably the best time for the kids during that day. Um, there's different, uh, in the classroom, there's different things set up so the kids can work on their literacy skills, they can work on social skills, they can um, create and experiment, take up goals. Why are you kidding me? Uh, like it's shop, store, and then there's a kitchen. There's different things for the kids to learn and act out and play. All right, everyone's favorite time of the day, recess. Um, that'll be a favorite, and probably if you ask how to school today, they'll only tell you about recess and nothing else. Um, typically, recess is 20 to 30 minutes a day. We try really hard to get them outside as much as possible. All of our schools have really nice uh, playscapes, as you can see. Tons of uh, you know field space where they can play soccer. Uh, but we love to get them outside and get fresh air if we can. Uh, if the weather is not with us or it gets really cold in the winter, we do bring them in. The teachers typically have indoor recess materials that they can choose from. Um, but recess uh, is probably the thing you'll hear most about. It's their favorite time. <laughs>
Your feelings about them going to kindergarten are going to quickly transfer into their feelings about going to kindergarten. So try your best to be excited about the fact that they're going, despite how you might actually be feeling. Um, if you have your own anxiety, please do whatever you can to manage your own anxiety so that you don't pass that on, um, because we want them to be excited. Uh, lots of kids get excited about the first day and then they don't realize that they have to keep coming for 180 more days. So try to explain to them that's not just a one-shot deal that you go to kindergarten and it's over the next day. Uh, let them know that this is their new job and this is what they have to do. And uh, again, just try to talk to them about it as much as you can and just be as positive as possible. Uh, there are so many things that you can do at home that can help them to get ready, and they're probably things that you're doing all the time, and you may or may not realize how important that those things are uh, for the things that they need to know how to do in kindergarten. So all of these things help them with their executive functioning, all the things that Jeff was talking about earlier, helps them with their fine motor control. Uh, there's even things that are so important, even if you're just going to play a board game, and I know lots of families don't do those things anymore, but it helps them learn that they have to wait their turn about fair play, about solving conflicts with each other, and just doing things cooperatively. Uh, but all of these things help them. They have letters in them, they have colors, they have measuring, um, just basic time outside and time together as a family. So those things might not seem important, but they really are vital to them having those executive functioning skills that they're going to need in kindergarten. They really are. So the more of those things that you can do on the list, the better. Um, notice that we put read up there first and we put it three times because it is a really significant predictor of how they're going to do later in school the more time that you read. If you have a nightly routine that includes reading a story every night, that helps them tremendously when they get uh, to school. Um, also, sleeping is not on the list, but please try really hard to have a really good bedtime routine. Um, Five-year-olds need tons of sleep. They need like 10 hours of sleep. Uh, or more sometimes. And when they come to kindergarten, they are exhausted. When they get home, it's really hard for them to stretch their executive functioning for the hours of the school day. So please try to make sure that they get plenty of sleep and that they do it on a regular schedule. And if at all possible, that they're not on their tablets right before bedtime because we know that doesn't help them with their sleep at all either. Um, so even really simple things can be super helpful to get them ready for kindergarten. So do as much as you can you know, over the summer. That would be great. Uh, lastly, we do expect them to be independent to some extent, and um, these are just some simple examples of things that we really need them to do. Um, reason number one is obviously, logistically speaking, uh, one teacher cannot tie 20 children's shoelaces. It's just not possible, and that's a skill, again, needs a ton of practice, and it's great for their fine motor. It's great for their growth mindset, so they learn that they can persevere, and if they work hard at something, they'll learn how to do it. Um, we also sometimes, uh, all of us, and Mr. Graham was saying, are, are some are parents and some are not, but we often can fall into that trap where you are rushing and you are late and it would probably take 10 seconds for you to zip up their jacket versus the probably full five minutes it would take you to talk them through them zipping their own jacket. We all fall into that trap. But when they get to school, you're not going to be there. And their teacher cannot take the 10 seconds times 20 kids to do that. So we really need them to practice those skills. Even simple things like the snacks that you send into school, think ahead of time. Is it possible that they can open that package by themselves without you being there? We like for them to be able to problem solve those things and to work their fine motor skills. Um, but again, having those independent skills is really important. Also, the more independent that they are at this age, the more confident they're gonna be when they get to school. If they're looking around and all the other kids don't know how to zip up their coat or tie their shoes, and they do, it gives them a tremendous amount of confidence that they didn't need their help, and it really does help them get through their school day. Um, obviously, using the restroom is very important to us that they know how to do that well, um, and how to properly wash and dry their hands. I know it seems silly, but how to actually blow your nose independently is a big deal. Um, sanitizing is also really important to us, so the more they understand that, the better. Um, but these are all things that you can do between now and September, and all of those skills that they can build would really help out um, their school day. They will just feel better, and they'll be more independent, and therefore more confident. Uh, before we move on, I just want to introduce anyone in the crowd that I know is here from Enco Public Schools. There are so many people who came out tonight to welcome you, say hello, support you. Um, so I 
do want to just introduce a few people. Um, so if I call your name, if you can just stand up briefly, wave our mobile drum spot, I will leave them um, But we have Chief Academic Officer Michelle Wilson.
We want to partner with you, and we want to make sure that your kids have a great school experience. I don't remember all my teachers' names growing up, but I remember the buildings, I remember the experience that I had, and that's what we want to give your kids. Also, how many people did not grow up here in Enfield or already have students in Enfield? Okay, we have one little trick here in Enfield. This is something that is different from where I grew up. So where I grew up, we built in snow days. I grew up in upstate New York. We got a lot of snow. When we have a snow day or a cancellation here, this is one thing I want to make sure that you guys knew, because I didn't know this when I was a kindergarten here. The last day of school can move, so maybe don't plan that big family trip or that, uh, that big excursion down to the mouse house when you think this is the last day of school, because it might move a few days. Um, we had two cancellations this year, and then we had to cancel school for the primaries because we use some of our school buildings in remote location spots. So our last day of school this year is now Wednesday, June 12th. But if you just had that static paper calendar that you got when the school year started, you might have thought it was done on the 9th. So just things like that to keep in mind. But please, please, please keep the lines of communications open with your classroom teachers and your building administrators. And I know that all of them are going to take care of your kids like they did with mine. And I wish you all luck. And I know you've heard a lot tonight and it seems a little scary, but it's going to be great. I promise. So if you have a question, I just, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. I'll come down. This is kind of my MC part of the night where I can give you the microphone. I see a kid have a question. I'm super excited about that. <laughs>